what the actual heck is going on? A few days ago it was super warm, but yesterday Montreal got a snowstorm and now it's just raining. Yeah, that's crazy. Sometimes it makes me feel like I'm living in a TikTok video about Canadian weather. Got a lot of words you don't know how to say. Pull out all your big ones, trying to flip my face. I give you a big hug, say I'm feeling great. It's okay, baby, baby, it's okay. Alright, so for the past couple of weeks, I've been working on the library initialization for my project Playlistmate, which will be in a public open source repo soon. And while I was testing, it suddenly hit me that the library setup might be triggered multiple times in a minute. And that's more than fine, because I'm not going to be the only user of my service. But here is the catch. The library setup takes about 10-ish seconds, because I need to make a lot of requests to fetch all the user tracks. And with such processing time, my app can run into some collision issue. In other words, the same track and artist with the same IDs can be stored twice or more times. Why? Let me explain. But first, I'm gonna grab some coffee. Let's go! I store tracks and artists in database and I don't want to waste my storage. So relationship between those two is many to many. A track might have multiple artists and at the same time those exact artists might have uh, multiple tracks, which makes sense. Now imagine this, two people have super similar music tastes. Both listen to the same artist and maybe even have the same tracks in their library. This case have a very high chance of being true. So they are logging into the service at exact same time and their accounts are being set up. Here things can go wrong very quickly. This is what's happening in the background when multiple people are trying to set up their accounts. The backend gets tracks for both users. Both track sets are checked whether any of those tracks are previously stored in the database. And here is the tricky thing. As these two checks are done simultaneously in a separate threads, the database can just say nope I don't have those tracks. You can save them if you want. So the backend saved the same music entities but from different batches. And here we go. Now you have duplicates in the database. I'm always trying to stick to a fail fast philosophy. So I set up a couple of database constraints, each for track and artist IDs. And if that scenario even happened, the backend would fail the process with the, an exception. But you could say it won't fix the problem. And I agree. So here is the actual solution. One way to avoid this is to add a queue for library initialization. So I can create an in-memory queue and put each incoming library setup request in there. And the issue is solved, right? Well, not really. What if I tell you that I want to scale my app and have two or three instances? Would the in-memory queue still work? No. For scalable systems, all you need is a distributed message broker. So yeah, that was the moment when I added RabbitMQ to PlayListMate's architecture. You could ask, why not Kafka? I'm planning to use WebSockets for some other features and unfortunately Kafka doesn't support that protocol. And other than that, I just don't want to over-engineer things. By the way, if you want to become a skilled software engineer who creates modern, robust and maintainable applications without unnecessary complexity, my partner's course careers will help you to become one. I genuinely believe that their software development fundamentals course is a great starting point that will take you from absolute basics all the way to interview prep. Course careers get you all set to land an entry software engineer position. You will build a solid understanding of data structures, algorithms and system design, which can be a game changer in the actual interviews. Also, you will try yourself in both backend and frontend, choose your path, and go beyond the basics to more specialized topics. You will get access to the Discord community where you can network with other students, mentors, and your instructor. You will be building your own projects that will be reviewed by your mentors who already are in the industry. So if you guys want to break into tech, there is a free introductory course that you can take with no obligations. And most importantly, without any prior experience or degree. Also, if you use my link, you will get $50 off from the full course. 
All right, so now I have RabbitMQ and I can put all events for user library initialization in there. This way, all events would be processed one by one, which would guarantee zero data duplicates. And the most easiest way to use RabbitMQ or Kafka with Spring is by adding Spring Cloud Stream starter library. By using Spring Cloud Streams, you don't need to create queues, topics, bindings, and all that stuff manually, because Spring will take care of it for you. So what I did, I created a message producer that under the hood uses StreamBridge to push events to the message broker. Also, I have a consumer from the Java function package that would actually consume RabbitMQ messages. And here I eventually call the library initialization service. The last important thing that I'd like to highlight here, that we should set the consumer group for the queue. Otherwise, each backend instance will process the same event independently. And that's exactly what I'm trying to avoid here. And that's it. Now my backend is one step closer to being a scalable and cloud-native application.